On June 30th, a New York-based rapper named ASAP Rocky and his entourage were involved in a fight with two men in Sweden. Bro, go that way, bro. Go that way. Days later, Rocky was arrested by Swedish police for aggravated assault. And he's been held in a jail cell ever since. Rocky, whose real name is Rakim Myers, is pleading not guilty. The hard hand on that takes all nerdvan. Alternative, putative nerdvan. Rocky testified in court today, and the last day of the trial is expected to be tomorrow. If he's convicted, the maximum sentence is two years. Meanwhile, several hip hop artists have announced that they'll be boycotting Sweden on future tours. And President Trump's been conducting diplomacy the way he usually does it by making demands on Twitter. But it's hard to talk about this case without understanding how the criminal justice system works in Sweden. For example, President Trump has offered to pay Rocky's bail, but he can't because Sweden doesn't have a bail system like we do. In fact, most countries don't. Countries that have a bail system tend to favor people that have large financial resources, that they have high social standard in the society and are perhaps famous and rich. So I think that's one of the reasons that we see that Sweden does not have a bail system. So it's a way of assuring that everyone is equal in face of the law as well, so that you cannot buy your way to freedom. Sweden's system tries to make it clear that powerful people and celebrities are not above the law, which sounds nice. But in Sweden, there's no maximum amount of time that a person can be held before their trial. The EU's Committee for the Prevention of Torture has repeatedly criticized Sweden for its long pre-trial detentions, and legal experts in Sweden have been trying to change this system. But there hasn't been a lot of movement until now. Well, thanks to the situation with ASAP Rocky, now the media, and especially the international media, have put its spotlight on Sweden and its laws regarding pre-trial detention. And hopefully that media spotlight will make the Swedish government change and update the Swedish laws. This isn't just speculation. Sweden's Minister for Home Affairs wrote in an email last week to Swedish Public Radio, saying that he's planning to announce changes to the system soon. But let's not forget that some of that media pressure was because of Trump's timely obsession with Rocky's case, which probably has less to do with human rights than with boosting his own image. Remember, not so long ago, the House passed a resolution calling Donald Trump's tweets about four members of Congress racist. Three days after that, Trump started tweeting about ASAP Rocky. Then he pulled the race card, saying that Sweden's prime minister is letting down black Americans. It all seems to be part of a new charm offensive to convince voters that black people like him. What I've done for African Americans in two and a half years, no president has been able to do anything like it. The African American community is so thankful. They've called me and they said, finally, somebody is telling the truth. This whole I'm not racist campaign doesn't seem to be going so well considering that a new poll released this week shows that about half of Americans think that Trump is racist. So to recap, an American rapper getting into a street fight and a president's attempt to use that rapper as a political pawn could push a country to fix its criminal justice system, which I guess is a silver lining in this whole thing. But as a noted political commentator has pointed out, what it probably won't do is change anything back here in the US.